welcome everybody <laughs> thank you for the heads up in the in the chat that's that's really appreciated um my name's sam and uh disclaimer disclaimer i'm just an, an, average, an average individual this is not professional counseling advice this isn't um anything along those types of lines this is just one person over in the uk sharing his experiences and hoping that that can be a blessing to others um I guess probably a, a little bit about me. I'm local elder in my in my in the church that I attend. I used to be the outreach coordinator for the Peace School of Evangelism. I sit on the British Union Conference Executive Committee, and I'm the co-host of a podcast called Faith on Top, which explores the career and faith journeys of individuals. Um, who have done really well career-wise, but have also kept faith at the top of their their um, their lives, and how young adults can learn from their from their journeys. So anyway, that's a little bit about me. But today we're talking about selfless self-care, and I was hoping that this could be more of a um, a what's the word I'm looking for. A thing where we're sharing and we're coming together. I've got some content that we're going through, but just have that in mind as we go through. Let's say a prayer and we'll begin. Yeah. Dear Lord, we thank you for your love, kindness, and mercy. You've been so good to us. As we go into this session, I'm asking for you to speak to us. I'm asking that you will challenge us to come up higher. There's so much to learn, there's so much to share, there's so much to know. And um, Sometimes it can feel so exhausting with everything that's going on around us, the pressures of quote unquote adulting. I'm praying to you, Lord, that you will help us to navigate um, our life journeys with you in a way that makes sense and in a way whereby we can experience the fullness of joy that you're calling us to experience. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I recognize that um, I've, I've had this a couple of times now. I recognize whenever I'm speaking in the States or speaking to a US audience that I've got a bit of a different accent. And also I can sometimes speak very quickly. So feel free, take yourself off mute. Feel free, jump in the chat. Sam, you're speaking too quickly, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'll come back in and I'll repeat um, whatever needs to be repeated. So I wanna start this session by just saying a few things um, regarding self-care. And um, it's gonna take us to the book of Mark. The book of Mark. Let me bring it up for us. Um, Mark chapter 12, reading verses 30 and 31. Mark 12, 30 and 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy mind and with all thy soul. Sorry, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it. Namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. You've got to, we're starting with a premise. You've got to, according to what Jesus has told us in Mark chapter 12, verses 13 and 31. We must love the Lord our God in a few areas. Our heart our soul, 
our mind and our strength. And the second commandment is like it. It's this, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, we may not realize it, but in these words that Jesus has spoken, you point us to the heart of good self-care. Good self-care. Um, let's check it out. Loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the first commandment. Um, and, and these are some of the areas that make us human beings. Spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, physically. And, and we'll get more of that. Um, in a bit. And then Jesus in the same breath says, we're to love our neighbors in the same way that he, he expects us or he's, he knows us that we do, that we love ourselves. And so um, Jesus assumes that we want the best for ourselves. That's how he created us. That's how he created us. So he instructs us to pursue with us the best, in, to pursue the best interest of others with the same interest with which we pursue our own self. And when you love God with every part of your being, he fills you up to an overflow with his amazing love. And out of that overflow, you give to others. And that is a balanced life. Um, and that's the only life worth, willing, worth living. Now, now, a question that I want us to start with is this. How do you show up? How do you show up? For the people that you love, for the people that you know, for the people that you care for, how do you show up? Are you tired? Exasperated? Just about making it? barely there, or are you prepared? That's, that's why we're starting with this thing. How do you show up? How do you show up for the people that you love and you care for? Family, friends, siblings, all of these people. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you're tracking with me so far as we're building this basis about selfless self-care. How do you show up? Um, it's a key question that I feel like we need to take in take into consideration. And I want us to look at a few texts with regards to Jesus and how he took care of his own needs, his own needs. The first one is Matthew 14, 23. Welcome everybody, for those who have just come in. Um, it's a privilege, to, honestly, it's, honestly, it's a privilege to have you here. And um, let's learn together, let's learn together. So far, just drop in the chat is what I'm saying. Everyone can hear me, everyone can hear what I'm saying. That's all, that's all okay. Yeah, fine. Good, good, good. So we're in Matthew 14, 23. We're just going to read a few texts. Looking at the life of Jesus and self-care. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And, Matt, and John 6, verse 15. John chapter 6, verse 15. John 6, verse 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they were come and taken by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself, alone. So I've been quote unquote adulting for a few years now. And in my adulting journey, one of the things I'm realizing and I'm seeing is that there's so much pressures from the outside world to perform. You know how the church is and you know how work is you know how life is, you know how social media is. Um, at every stage, it's like you've got to be doing something. 
at every stage, you've either got to be going to university, you've, you've got to be getting your masters, um, you, you've got to begin in a relationship, you've got to, you've got to be mission work. There's different things you've got to be doing, and, and, and there's lots of pressures that come along. And sometimes it's hard to focus just on what God's asking you to do outside of the external pressures that sometimes we can face as you're growing up from I don't know either, I don't know what stage where everybody's every everybody's that on, on the on in, in the call but you know whether you're a millennial whether you're a gen z whether you're older whether you're younger everyone feels certain pressures and expectations from those around us and sometimes what we've just seen in the example of Jesus Christ particularly in this one John 6 verse 15 when Jesus therefore perceived that they were come and taken by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Here we see an element of Jesus' self-care where Jesus takes time to be alone. In a world filled with hustle and bustle and the expectations of others, it's incumbent on the Christian young person to take time alone alone there's everyone else's expectations but there's also a long time what else do we see jesus doing mark 15 verse 41 mark 15 verse 41 um this is gonna start getting oh few ground rules few ground rules if you got some questions if you got some questions feel free to jump in. There will be a Q&A at the end. There will be a Q&A at the end. But if you have some questions, feel free to jump in. That's okay. And just ask the question. I'm, I'm more than comfortable to, to accommodate that. But we will have some Q&A at the end. Mark 15, 41. Thank you, Nick. Mark 15, 41. The Bible says, Who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him, unto Jerusalem okay so this is the the crucifixion scene talking about Jesus when he was dying at the cross and when he was on the cross verse 40 says there were also women looking uh, looking uh, on afar off among whom also among whom was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the less and of Joseph and Salome who also when he was in Galilee followed him and ministered unto him and many, many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. Um, Jesus wasn't a person who felt like he needed to do it all by himself. He's had a long time. He had a long time. But he wasn't a person who felt like he needed to do it all by himself. But actually, he allowed other people to minister to his needs. Sometimes it can feel like in the culture that we're in, that we've got to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and that I've got to do it by myself. But actually, we see here in the example of Jesus Christ where he allowed himself to receive help from other people. We'll be going back into that a bit later. I'm just laying the groundwork with Jesus Christ as we unpack selfless self-care. Let's go to our next text. Um, Matthew 21, verse 18. Matthew chapter 21, verse 18. Now in the morning, he returned into the city. He hungered. He hungered. John 4, verse 7. John chapter 4, verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. Give me to drink. In John 21, 18, we find Jesus hungry. And in John 4, verse 7, we see Jesus thirsty. And Jesus didn't make these things a secret. He didn't just try to power through. But actually, he made time to eat and he made time to drink. I'm guilty, to be honest, in my own life, where sometimes you're just trying to power through. But here, we see Jesus taking time for a long time. 
we see Jesus allowing himself not only to just be in service, but also allow himself to be served. We see Jesus not making it a secret when he's hungry or when he's thirsty. Now, John 2, 24. John chapter 2, verse 24. John chapter 2, verse 24. Or let's go from verse 23. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast days, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. Verse 24. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. And verse 25, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Okay, and then let's also go to John 11, verse 6. John 11, verse 6. Um, or, 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 or you, well, we're going to come back to this story in a moment. But you know when. When, when, when Lazarus passes away or Lazarus is sick. And so he asks Jesus, or he's not he, but Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, ask Jesus to come and heal their brother. Let's look at verse six. When he heard, therefore, that he was sick, that Lazarus was sick, he abode two days in the same place where he was. Where he was. Okay. First of all, we see Jesus taking a long time. We see that Jesus allowed himself to, allowed himself to, to be open, to, 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 to be open to allowing other people to help him. We're going to be back there in a moment. Um, uh, Jesus didn't make it a secret when he was hungry or thirsty. Uh, this other one, Jesus didn't allow other people to control his schedule. His schedule. Um, or his agenda. With the many pressures that's going on, sometimes the expectations of others can be put on us in a way whereby we're not seeking first the kingdom of God, but maybe my parents are saying, I've got to do this X, Y, Z. I've got certain educational goals I've got to meet for my parents. And that can be fine, but sometimes it can go against Matthew 6.33. Sometimes society is saying, I've got to be at a certain stage in my life because I'm at a particular age but not recognizing the fact that God's controlling my story, God's controlling my journey, and that it's by him and him alone that I'm to make plans and to give them up or carry them out as he sees fit. And here we see Jesus had his own schedule and agenda, and he followed through with what he believed God was calling him to do at that time. And we'll be back at that story in John 11 a little bit later. Um, Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 38. Matthew 26, Matthew 26, verse 36 to 38. Then cometh Jesus with him unto a place called Gethsemane. Sorry. Then cometh Jesus. Well, am I in the right place? Matthew 26, yeah, yeah. Matthew 26, 36 to 38. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples, See ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And let's read verse 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Verse 40. And as he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, he saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Okay. Here we see Jesus praying. He's looking for divine assistance. But here we see also Jesus leaning out to his friends, his disciples, because he's also looking for human, a human touch, a human element, some human compassion. Jesus also had needs. Um, and a part of Jesus' self-care was not only looking for divine assistance, that must be done and cannot be understated or overstated rather, cannot be overstated. 
But it's also, it's also good to have community. We'll be there in a moment. We'll be there in a moment. And so we see that Jesus practiced excellent self-care. And he doesn't want us to overlook our legitimate needs. Luke 12, verse 30. Luke chapter 12, verse 30. The Bible says, for all these things do the nations of the world seek. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Any need that you have, any need that you have, your father knows that you have need of those things. He knows, he loves you, and he cares. Now, um, I started off by saying there were different areas that God is seeking for us to love him in, to love him in. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And I want to look, if you don't mind, just for a few moments at how we can zoom in on some of those areas. And after we've zoomed in on some of those areas, I'm going to open it up for questions, have some feedback, and then we'll take it from there. That's the plan. That's the plan. Um, and so let's do the first one. Let's do the first one. Spirituality. John chapter 11. Now I need everyone to, to stay with me here. John chapter 11. And let's read verses 38 to 44. 38 to 44. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the cave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou heardst me, that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Okay. Lazarus has been dead four days. Mary and Martha previously have asked Jesus to come and heal the brother. By the time Jesus gets there, he's been dead four days. So he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead. And he asks them to remove the stone from the cave where Lazarus's dead body is. There's a little bit of resistance um, from Martha because Martha says to him, Lord, by this time, I'm talking about self-care. Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he has been dead four days. But talk about self-care from a spiritual standpoint. And some of the things that young people, as young people, we can do to ensure that we're in a healthy state of being from a spiritual standpoint. Um, Lord, by this time, he stinketh, for he's been dead four days. So there's a bit of resistance from Martha. And, and so Jesus comes back at her and says, uh, you know, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Um, and so, verse 43. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, 
Loose him and let him go. All right. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. But when Lazarus comes back from the dead, he's still bound with grave clothes. And he was bound, his face was bound with a napkin. So whilst he was dead, he was bound with these grave clothes. Um, he, he, I, I don't know how that process was, but he was bound. He couldn't move. He, 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 he was, it was done in a way whereby this thing was sealed up. His body was sealed up and his face was bound as well. Now, we don't know how he got out the tomb. Maybe he had to wriggle out. Maybe he had to, we don't know how he got out, but he comes out somehow. And the things that bound him or bound him, bound him whilst he was dead are now still binding him, even though he's been brought back to life. Jesus doesn't take the grave clothes off him. He says to the people that are round about in the area, in the vicinity, loose him and let him go. All right. Keep a pin in your mind there. Keep a pin in your mind there. John chapter 4. Verses 1 and 2. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Okay. So, so Jesus is going around, he's preaching, he's teaching, he's healing. And as he's preaching, teaching, and healing, people are making decisions to get baptized. We just had a, a, a it, at the moment in England, it's, it's quarter past eight in the evening. And um, earlier this morning, we just had a baptism at my local church. Um, one of the ladies, um, she'd been listening actually to, I think, amazing facts over in America, walked into, walked into our, our local church last year. First time she's in church, says she wants to be baptized. Wants to be baptized. And so um, she had a, had a, she's been through a journey of Bible studies. And today she made a decision and got baptized today. And so, and so similar to um, John chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, it wasn't Jesus that did the actual baptizing. It's his disciples that do the baptizing. But Jesus is going around, he's inspiring hearts and minds. He's speaking to the people through the power of the Holy Spirit. And as he does so, people are making decisions to follow Jesus. But it's not Jesus who comes down from the heavenly sanctuary. Or in this case, it just wasn't Jesus that was in the vicinity. He was there physically. But it was his disciples that did his baptizing. It was the people that stood around. Now, following that same line of thought, come with me to Zechariah chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing to resist him. There's this gentleman called Joshua, the high priest. He wants to get access to the Lord, to God's presence. And Satan's there trying to block God's presence. And the Lord says in verse 2 unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee. Is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? And so the word of the Lord stops Satan from blocking Joshua's access to God's presence. Verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And as he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him, he said, behold, I've caused an iniquity to pass from thee. I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Okay. Joshua was there. The word of the Lord has rebuked Satan. And this has allowed Joshua to have access to God to act the access to God that he, he desires. But he's clothed with filthy garments. It's not God that takes the filthy garments from him. What does it say? He spake unto those that stood before him. It's those that were in the vicinity of Joshua that take the filthy garments of Joshua. In John chapter 4, Jesus is going around, he's preaching, he's teaching, he's healing. And, 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 and people are following Jesus Christ and making decisions to be baptized. But it's not Jesus that does the baptism. It's his disciples that do the baptism. And in John chapter 11, with, with Lazarus, 
Lazarus is raised from the physical dead. But as he comes back from the physical dead, he's still got the garments that held him bound physically, still binding him, even though he's now alive. But Jesus doesn't go and release him from the things that are binding him. He asks those that are standing around him to remove the grave clothes off him. All right. As a young person, as an individual that wants to be engaged in spiritual self-care, sometimes I think we try to do that, particularly post-COVID, in isolation. But God actually, actually places us in community. Because if you trace your experience and your life and your journey, you'll see that there's been many times that God has spoken spiritual life into you. He's caused you to want to follow him. He's called you to want to go deeper in him. But there's still habits. There's still patterns of behavior. There's still things and thought processes that you're used to that still bind you, that still have a hold on you, even though Christ has spoken spiritual life into you. But there's a new splash I've got for you this afternoon. This afternoon? I think it's afternoon there. This afternoon. And it's this, Jesus Christ is not going to come down from the heavenly sanctuary to mentor you face to face. What he does is, is that he places you in community so that other people can help mentor you to help take the grave clothes off you, which are binding you. And part of self-care in a spiritual sense is placing yourself in Christian community so that you can experience the freedom that God's calling you to experience. I'm hoping that makes sense. Number one, spiritual self-care. Best happens in community. In community. Sometimes as a young person, especially like when you're a university student or a college student, or you, you know, you're still doing your thing or just a young person you've been working hard all week and sometimes the temptation is it's sabbath morning let me just log in online and just see on youtube let me see if i can just i don't know you know there's just a bit of disengagement especially post-covid we're so used to zoom we're so used to doing our things online but 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 but, but i would implore you that if you want to travel, there's this proverb that I heard. If you want to travel fast, if you want to travel fast, travel by yourself. But if you want to travel far, you've got to travel with others. And it's with others. As I get involved with others, as I get involved in trying to serve, as I get involved in trying to help out it with my local church, just with the, maybe the local youth group, with maybe my, in local spaces where God's giving me opportunity, God uses those opportunities to not only for you to help others, but he's doing those things to help take the grave clothes off you. Let me give you two examples of this. And then we'll go to our next step on this thing of spiritual self-care. Two examples. One is found in Matthew chapter 28. Verses 16 to 20. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach your nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Okay. Um, here you have some people in verse 17 who were worshipping, but have also got doubts. Got doubts. Got doubts. A bit like what I've just said with Lazarus. Um, they've got spiritual life, but they're still bound. There's still some bondage in their experience. And Jesus' response to the people that are worshipping, but have got doubts, they've still got some questions in their minds. 
He said, I want you to be the best you can be. I've got a purpose and a plan for you. I've got ideals for you. I've got a vision for you. There's goals and heights that you've not yet achieved that I want you to experience. And so he says to the person that's a worshipping doubter, this is what he says. This is what he says. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And God calls the person who's worshipping but still struggling to go and serve. Self-care starts, sometimes we think, by receiving. But actually, I'd like to flip that on its head. Many times from a spiritual standpoint, self-care can look like giving. Because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Let me do another one for you. If you can find it quickly. Um, right. Mark chapter 60. This was powerful. This was powerful. Oh, Gene's put something in the chat. Let me have a quick look. Praise God. I'm also realizing that Jesus didn't do everything in a manner that he would become overwhelmed. He delegated tasks to others so that all the weight of the work did not fall on his shoulders alone. This is really helpful. A truly powerful example of biblical self-care. Amen. Amen. And we're gonna we're gonna unpack, hopefully, if I get time, we're gonna unpack some of what that what, what that means and what that looks like. Check this one out. Check this one out. Check this one out. G, um, Mark 16, reading from verse 9. Now, when Jesus was risen early in the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast seven devils. And went and told them that had be with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was not alive, sorry, and when they heard that he was alive, sorry, and had been stealing her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And when they went and told it unto the residue, neither, neither believed they them. Verse 14. Afterward, he appeared. That's Jesus. Jesus appeared. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. So they're eating. And then something's interesting here. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's telling them off about their unbelief and hardness of heart. They're struggling. They're struggling. They're struggling with unbelief. They're wrestling with hard hearts. They're not quite where God would have them to be. And Jesus is trying to wrestle with them on this point. And so he gives them his response to them, to their unbelief, to their hardness of heart, is verse 15. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be served, saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so, 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 so Jesus has got a response to unbelief, a response to hardness of heart, and it's this. Go help in service. Right, let me come off this point now. Let me come off this point. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. But I'm hoping that makes sense. Point one, in spiritual self-care. In trying to take care of yourself in a spiritual standpoint, sometimes I'm thinking I need to look out for me, myself, and I. But number one, number one, it looks like placing myself in community. Placing myself in community. Um, number two, number two, a spiritual self care also looks like service, service to others. And in service to others, God's actually using that service to others to transform me in the process. Transform me in the process. Um, let's let's press on. Let's press on with a couple of things. Um, spiritual self care. Um, let's turn to. Luke chapter 22. Verse 44. 
Luke chapter 22, verse 44. Or we can read, actually, from verse 41. My apologies. And when he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. A couple of things here um, that I want us to unpack. Prayer. Prayer. As a mean of strength can literally not necessarily change what you're about to go through, but strengthen you so that you're able to go through it. Sometimes prayer will change what you're about to go through. Sometimes prayer won't change what you're about to go through. But what prayer will do is give you the capacity to be able to embrace and go through, not necessarily embrace, but brace yourself. That's what I was trying to say. Brace yourself to go through what God's calling you to go through. Um, verse 44, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Now, I need you guys to help me here in the chat. Was Jesus here at peace? Verse 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Would you say Jesus was at peace or would you say he was feeling anxious? Say something in the chat for me, please. I'm interested in your thoughts. Anxious. You got anxious? Um, would you say he was nervous? Oh, we, we say he was nervous. Um, what do you think? Would you say Jesus at this moment, it was all smiles and it was, he was happy and, and he, all of his feelings were okay? Um, um, or was there a bit of anxiety? There wasn't anxiety, there was anxiety, wasn't there? Here, it's not a good place. He's in agony, the text says. Um, he, he's anxious. Um, he, he's nervous, he's probably got, uh, maybe, I don't know, perhaps a bit of fear. Um, um, you name it, any kind of loads of anxiety, loads of anxiety, you name it, I guess he, he's, his well-being wasn't 100% here. Well-being wasn't 100% here. Um, but, but, but at this moment, in verse 44, and carrying on, we're talking about Jesus Christ. He's in the center of God's will. He's feeling anxious, loads of anxiety, nervousness, agony. And he's in the center of God's will. The center, can't get any more central. We talk about Jesus, Jesus Christ was never outside this, outside of, he was in the center of it. Self-care does not necessarily mean that your feelings are always going to be what you want them to be. And being in the center of God's will doesn't necessarily mean that you won't go through extreme trepidation. Come with me to Jonah. Um, I want to show you something, the contrast here.
in Jonah, where are we at? Chapter one, you remember Jonah, don't you? Reading from verse one. Now the Lord of the now the word of the Lord came into Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, "Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me." But Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with him to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Where God was calling Jonah to go was over here. Where Jonah was going was completely over there. All right. Verse 5 says, no, no, verse 4 says, And the Lord sent out a great wind in the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship on, into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship, and he laid and was fast asleep. Here you've got Jesus in the center of God's will, anxious, nervous, not able to see through the portals of the tomb. Here you've got Jesus, Jonah going in the opposite direction to where God's will would have him to be. And he's fast asleep, sweet, sweet sleep in the midst of a storm. To the point where someone has to wake him up. Feelings. Feelings can sometimes fool you. I'm hoping everybody's understanding what I'm saying here. And so sometimes we think that self-care must be led by feelings alone. Feelings alone. But actually, self-care must be directed by the word of God. So first of all, we see in the passage from Jesus, by the passage from Jesus, that Jesus prayed and that prayer strengthened him. It strengthened him. And second of all, an element of spiritual self-care is making sure that what I'm doing is being directed by the word of God. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. We see something very interesting. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou shalt have good success. I remember I was getting my um, I was giving sharing this experience just yesterday, into the evening. First job out of university, and uh, I'd mentioned the Sabbath to my employers loosely. You know when you mention it loosely, but you don't do it correctly. So I mentioned it loosely, but it was, it was haphazard. It was haphazard. Like many a young professional who just left university, they hadn't thought about spiritual, their spirituality. They hadn't preempted um, what God would have them to do on a spiritual level, the spiritual self-care hadn't come into mind. They were just thinking about physical self-care. I've got to get some money. I've got to do this. I've got to do X. I've got to do, I've got to, I've got to get on top of the ladder. I've got to, I've got to start. That, that's what was going on. That's what was going on. And so, and so this is many years ago. You're talking over 10 years ago. And so first job outside of university, I'm trying to, trying to make ends meet. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put myself on the ladder. And I hadn't spoken about Sabbath properly or correctly or come correct with that. And, and um, I remember talking to a spiritual mentor of mine and he just encouraged me saying, Sam, Sam, you need to do something. And so I think it was the Thursday we'd had that conversation. And, and that Friday, um, I didn't know what I was going to do. But I got down on my knees. Got down on my knees. And I asked God, God, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. These times, you know what you're supposed to do. But I made time to pray, if that makes sense. So I'm there, God, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do, but, but I need some help. 
I've put myself in a sticky scenario. I want to do what's right. I've got obligations to employers. I'm not sure how this thing's going to turn out. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Lord, I need strength to make right decisions. And in those moments, the Ten Commandments, just the Fourth Commandment just came to mind. And remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And I just decided to take a step forward in faith. I left my knees that day with a strength that I didn't have prior to going to my knees. The word of God had come to my mind and I fortified my mind to make a decision that I was willing to make prior to me not focusing on the word of God, hoping you're seeing the transition, how prayer and the word was now changing my actions. I went into that work that day. I spoke to my line manager and what I thought was going to be a disaster, God turned the whole scenario around and it worked out for my good. Because prayer and the word can help you on a spiritual level. And when you put your scenario in God's hands, spiritual self-care then feeds into your physical, emotional, and mental wealth, um, self-care. Let me explain that. In my next seminar, I'm going to be talking about forgiveness. Um, but, 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 but I want to unpack some of that here. Many people are struggling physically because they have not sorted things out spiritually. Because many times we don't see the connection between the spiritual and the forgiving and, 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 and the physical and the emotional and the mental. One guy called Greg struggling with blood pressure. Struggling with blood pressure. Blood pressure tablets not working for him. He's wrestling with unforgiveness. Wrestling with unforgiveness. As he's wrestling with unforgiveness, he decides one day to surrender this thing to the Lord. As he surrenders this thing to the Lord, what happens is, is now when he sees the person who he has been struggling to forgive because he surrendered it to God, he finds something happened to him, his blood pressure is regulated. There's a connection between the physical and the spiritual, but there's also a connection, we're transitioning now, between the physical, the emotional, the intellectual, and the spiritual. They all impact each other. And so we see in the book of Daniel, Daniel taking care of the physical. In chapter one, he's looking after his health. He's refusing to eat the king's meat. comes out 10 times wiser, has an impact on his mental. Um, he's got a clear mind he, he, and, and, and he's got a regular prayer life and he's got a regular prayer life. And these things are challenging him. These things are, are calling him higher. And as he's called higher, he then becomes the, 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 the number one person in the kingdom after the king because he makes a decision on the physical. Yes. I'll unpack this a bit more. First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. One, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. How do you show up? Am I healthy? Or because of just a lack of health, what have you? I'm tired. I'm sluggish. How do you show up? Am I prepared? Or am I needy? Am I ready to talk? So every time I, I sit down, um, my eyes are just falling asleep because I'm, I'm overworked. I haven't taken adequate time to rest. I'm not drinking enough water. 
Um, I, I, I haven't got a word in season for somebody who's weary because I haven't spent enough time in the word. Um, I'm not connecting with my heavenly father. So like a battery, like a battery um, that's connected. And it, it is, I, 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 there should be a connection with my heavenly father, but there should be an outflow to others. So I'm flowing out of an overflow to other people. Ephesians 5 verse 29, for no man yet ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. No parent wants to see their child struggling, weary, weak, neglectful, feeling like things are out of their control feeling like um, they're helpless. And neither does God to you. In all aspects of our life, he wants us to level up. He wants us to be the people he's called us to be. Um, he's calling us to become more and more like him in all aspects of, the, of our lives. Um, he's calling us to follow him. And as we follow him in all aspects of our lives, as we engage in the care that God calls us to for our lives and for our health. See, one of the nicest things you can do for those you love is take care of your health emotionally. Many of us know about the physical stuff. Many of us know about the, um, the spiritual stuff. Many of us know we should be on a regular reading program, but some of the mental well-being stuff, some of the emotion stuff, we haven't taken the time out to figure out, okay, let me level up on that area. Have I identified my emotions? Do I know what my triggers are? Do I know how to navigate them? Am, am I being controlled by how circumstances come at me? Or have I got a, an inner still? Because my peace comes from a, a somewhere, something that the world can't give and the world can't take away. I'm hoping that this session has been clear. I'm hoping that um, there's some things that we can take on um, in our minds and, and the way that God's calling this to be. And I'm hoping that we can show up for those around us, whole and complete in Jesus Christ. That we may be the people that God's called us to be. My final text that I'd like to leave with you is John 10.10. 10. John chapter 10, verse 10, which says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. It's God's desire for you to experience that abundant life. I'm hoping it was a blessing. I'm hoping that um, we've been challenged to come up higher. Um, God's calling us to come up higher. Um, you know, in Matthew chapter 24, this is just me just talking to you guys now. Matthew chapter 24, verses 6, 7, and 8. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. I'm not sure what you've seen, but it's going to get worse. God's calling for people in these last days of earth's history to level up in all areas of their life, their health, their emotional well-being, their mental fortitude, their spiritual lives. Um, these are things God's calling us to do, that we may be the light that God's calling us to be, that we may experience the things that God's calling us to experience, that we may love as God's calling us to love. Um, I'll just read it for us in the chat. Every day that we do not take good care of our health, we deny those whom we say we love of true love, possibly hasten, possibly hasten the need for our loved ones to care for us prematurely and putting undue pressure on those whom we say we love, we see then it is for others that we take care of ourselves through healthy actions and habits. When we look deeper into this life choice, into this life choice, 
we can see that it's possible for us to live a life of self-denial and, and yet live happier, healthier, and longer through service and true love, brothers. Amen. Is that your desire? Is that your desire? Um, if that's your desire, to live for God and to love others as we love ourselves, I'm asking you to, to pray with me and we can, we can connect. Do you know, we thank you for your love, kindness, and mercy. Um, help us to show up for those around us who you've put within our sphere of influence. But show up as the best version of ourselves. With everything that we have, dear Lord, knowing that um, we must be directed by you, that sometimes, dear Lord, um, being in the center of your will uh, uh, may not necessarily be as we like, but because we're following God's word, and as we follow your word and we trace your hands and we experience the things we're, you're calling us to experience, we know that everything will be okay in the end. Um, help us like Jesus to take care of our health, um, to take a long time with you, to, 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 to not be willing not only to give, but also to receive. You know, help us to follow Jesus' example. Help us, you know, to put not only um, our spiritual life, make that important, but physically, emotionally, um, mentally, intellectually, help us to, have, to come with the full package that we may love in the best way possible to other people. May that be our experience. Help us not to shy away from the things that give us spiritual health. Prayer, the word, community, service, and help us, dear Lord, to not shy away from the things that give us physical, emotional, and mental well-being also. May that be our experience. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.